Hello, and welcome to another video lecture with Mr. Albers and Mr. Stockman. Let's get started. That was perfect. All right, today we're talking about the specific reconstruction plans of the moderates and the radicals. If you did the uh, primary source reading yesterday, you'll know already that Lincoln is a moderate Republican. And Lincoln's plan, which we read yesterday, focused on a pardon. Right? He wanted to release the most Southerners from punishment as a whole and only have a select few high-ranking Southerners that he was going to punish. Right, And this is something known as amnesty. When you have a large group pardon, we call that amnesty. So one of the key tenets to his plan is providing that amnesty. Lincoln's plan is also known as the 10% plan, which is that once 10% of adult males take an oath of loyalty to the union, then those states can rejoin the Union fully. And obviously he exempted amnesty for high-ranking Confederates uh, in the, either the military or um, in the Confederate government. All right, we looked at that uh, primary source document yesterday that showed exactly who he was exempting. On the other side, you have the radical Republicans under the leadership of Thaddeus Stevens and Charles Sumner. They proposed what is called the Wade Davis Bill. The Wade Davis Bill requires 50% of adult white males to take an oath of loyalty instead of the smaller 10% of Lincoln. You can see here how one is much more harsh than the other. Once 50% of the adult males could, took the oath, that state could hold a constitutional convention. In order to serve at that constitutional convention, those people had to take what is known as the ironclad oath. All right, it's called the Ironclad Oath because during the Civil War, they introduced new ships known as Ironclads, which were clad in iron, hence the name Ironclad. Real good at naming stuff. Anyway, the Ironclad Oath basically said that you had to never have served the Confederacy in any capacity, either as a government official or a soldier in any way. They are trying to ensure that no ex-Confederates serve on the state constitutional conventions. A pretty tough task. Remember the goal of the radicals, delay the return of Southern states to the Union. This was a part of that plan. Those state conventions also were required to ratify the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. Once that, they did that, they had to agree that no former Confederate leaders can serve as federal representatives, and they had to agree to reject Confederate debt. If all of these stipulations were met, 50% oath of loyalty, constitutional convention with no ex-Confederates, rejecting Confederate debt, no former Confederate leaders, and ratifying the 13th Amendment, those states could be readmitted to the Union. This bill was pocket vetoed by Abraham Lincoln. What this means is a veto is when the president overturns a law with a signature. When that happens, the Congress can overturn a veto with two-thirds majority. Lincoln, hoping to avoid that, let the bill die by not signing it. Now, normally, after a bill is not signed after 10 days, that bill is a law without the president's signature, unless Congress adjourns. So what happens is they pass the Wade Davis bill, and they all go back home to their districts, right, wherever they're from. And when that happens, and the president doesn't sign the bill into law, the bill is just dead forever with no hope of Congress overturning any veto. So what this means is the Wade Davis bill was set aside and it was never to be heard from again. Those are the two initial plans by the moderates and the radicals. In the next video, we're gonna look at exactly how the radicals took power and what they did when they were there.